So it appears that mutual information tells us which features, words in our example earlier, are good predictors of the behavior we want to predict. Should we not use those with the highest mutual information as our features? The trouble is the actual mutual information from the formula is very difficult to compute exhaustively. There are just so many different possibilities with large numbers of features. So in practice we use proxies. Well, a good proxy that we've seen earlier is the inverse document frequency. There are other techniques. Adaboost in particular is an important algorithm, but we won't go into that in detail in this course. For the moment, think about using those words with high inverse document frequency as a proxy for words which are likely to be good features. Another question we might ask is, are more features always good? The y-axis here is measuring the error in the classification. That means how often naive Bayes gets the wrong answer. This error improves as we add features, but after some time it starts to degrade again. Why might this be happening? What do you think? Perhaps we are using the wrong features to start with. It turns out that that's not the whole story either. In this example, the features having the lowest mutual information or information gain, which is another term for the same uh, idea. It's those bad features which are used first and then the good features come later. Still, the classifier goes haywire. So what's going on? Can you guess? Remember that there's a reason why naive Bayes is called naive. It doesn't like redundant features. It assumes that features are independent. It likes the fact that features have very small mutual information amongst themselves. The trouble is that's not always the case, and this is one reason why the technique can fail. It gets confused because it assumes that features are independent. Well, in principle, one should be able to compute the best features either by computing the mutual information directly or using a proxy, as well as somehow figuring out which features are dependent and choose those best features which are also dependent. Many, many machine learning techniques do exactly this. We don't have time to go into the techniques in detail, but the idea should be clear by now. Let's return now to uh, looking at machine learning from the perspective of information theory. We have a machine learning algorithm which takes a sequence of observations such as uh, comments and classifies them as positive or negative in a manner so as to maximize the mutual information between the observations and their actual classifications versus the ones that the algorithm manages to predict. Relating this to what Shannon defined as the capacity of a communication channel. In his case, this was an actual communication channel, if you remember, like a uh, telephone channel or a radio channel. He look, was worried about how fast you could transmit information on such a channel. So he defined the capacity of a channel as the maximum information that could be transferred between the sender and receiver per second. So the element of speed comes in when you talk about capacity. What does this mean in the context of machine learning? Is there an equivalent notion of capacity? How fast can 
a machine algorithm actually learn? What does it mean to be fast? It turns out that there have been, there's been a lot of work on the theory of machine learning. Uh, the pioneer in this is Leslie Valiant, who won the Turing Award in 2011. And other important papers define something called the VC dimension, using which it was shown in this paper that the right Bayesian classifier will eventually learn any concept or any distinction between plus and minus, yin and yang. The trouble is, it need not run as fast. What does that mean? How many training examples does a classifier require to learn a concept? That's the equivalent of speed in the world of machine learning. And how fast depends on the concept itself. And the VC dimension or the vapnik chernonikis dimension of a concept can be measured, using which this paper showed that Bayesian learning can eventually learn any concept, and the speed depends on the VC dimension of the concept. Well, that's all we're going to do regarding machine learning theory for the moment. Let's return now to the question of whether sentiment analysis is actually measuring an opinion about a product, a course, or anything else. Remember, there are hundreds of millions of tweets a day. We can listen to the voice of the consumer like never before. We can figure out the sentiment and all these things, just as we've discussed in our example. But how do we figure out what consumers are saying or complaining about, not just whether or not they are complaining? What is the object of their complaint, or for that matter, their request or demand? Consider a comment such as, uh, book me an American flight to New York. What does the word American mean? Does it mean the airline, American Airlines, or does it mean the nationality of the airline, so that any airline of American origin will do? Obviously, this is an ambiguous sentence, and language is full of such vagueness and ambiguities. Suppose the writer also said, I hate British food. Maybe the uh, guess is now it's probably American Airlines because British Airways is also another airline and maybe they're talking about the food on British Airways. But suppose the comment was, I hate English food. Well, suddenly you've changed your decision and now he's thinking of any American carrier, not just American Airlines. Because American versus English clearly distinguishes the fact that he's talking about the nationality versus American versus British means that he's more likely to be talking about the carriers themselves. Consider this sentence, I only eat Kellogg cereals versus only I eat Kellogg cereals. Two very different things. What can you say about this home's breakfast stockpile? Clearly, in the first case, it's possibly saying that that person really wants to eat only Kellogg's. In the second case, he's saying maybe he wants to eat Kellogg's, but the rest of his family just doesn't like it. Two very different meanings. Took the new car on a terrible bumpy road. It did well, though. Is this family happy with their new car? Just looking at sentiment, it has so many negative words. Terrible, bumpy. It does have this positive word, well, but would the Bayesian class classifier guess that this is a positive or a negative comment properly? Probably not. 
the point we're trying to get at is is Bayesian learning using a bag of words just features being words themselves is it enough and more deeply we're trying to ask the issue of Richard Montague and Noam Chomsky how do we actually discern the meaning of a sentence versus just classifying it as positive, negative, good or bad, yin or yang. 